An insulating sphere of radius 2 meters contains 50 microclooms of electric charge uniformly distributed throughout the volume of the sphere. What is the electric field 1.5 meters away from the center of the sphere? How can we do this? Well, let's begin by drawing a picture. So this is going to be the sphere. And it's going to have a radius, which we'll call R. And the charge is distributed throughout the sphere. If you have a conducting sphere or a spherical conductor, the positive charge will spread out on the surface of the spherical conductor, which means that there will be no electric field inside the conductor. But we have an insulated sphere, so the charge is distributed throughout the sphere, which means that there exists an electric field inside the sphere. So let's draw an imaginary Gaussian surface represented by this uh, yellow sphere. And R is going to represent the distance between the center and the Gaussian surface. So we can calculate the electric field at that point. Now let's use Gauss's law to come up with an equation for the electric field inside the sphere. So Gauss's law states that the electric flux, which is the product of the electric field times the area of the Gaussian surface, is equal to the charge enclosed by that surface divided by epsilon sub naught. So how can we calculate the charge that is enclosed? A simple way to do that is to use uh, the volume ratio of the Gaussian surface compared to the actual sphere. So the charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface in yellow is equal to the total charge times the volume of the Gaussian surface, which I'll write as Vg, divided by the volume of the entire surface, which I'll leave as Vs. So Qt, I'm just going to write Q for it. That's going to be the total charge of the insulating sphere. The volume of the Gaussian surface is going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we need to use the radius of the Gaussian surface, or the Gaussian sphere. The volume of the actual sphere is 4 thirds pi, but using uh, the green R, or capital R. So we can cancel 4 thirds pi. And so now we have the expression for the charge enclosed by the Gaussian sphere. So let's replace this particular Q with Q times R cube over R cube. Now the area of the Gaussian surface is simply the surface area, which is 4 pi times R squared. So this is going to be equal to Q times R cube divided by big R cube. So notice that we can cancel two of the blue R's. So what we have left at this point is the electric field times 4 pi is equal to Q times R divided by R cube. So now let's divide both sides by 4 pi. And let's not forget epsilon. That should be in the bottom as well. So the electric field is equal to 1 over 4 pi times epsilon sub naught times q times r divided by r cubed. Now 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, that's equal to k. So we can write the equation like this. The electric field is equal to k times q, that's the total charge in the sphere, times the radius of the Gaussian surface inside the sphere, divided by the radius of the actual sphere, cubed. So let's go ahead and use this formula to get the answer. So k is uh, 9 times 10 to the 9. Q which represents the total charge on a sphere, that's 50 microclooms.
which is 50 times 10 to the minus 6. And r, the blue r, that's the radius of the Gaussian sphere, which is 1.5 meters. That's where we wish to calculate the electric field. And the green r value, that's the radius of the insulating sphere, which is 2 meters. So it's going to be 2 raised to the third power. So let's go ahead and plug this in. So the electric field is equal to 84,375 newtons per coulomb. So that's all you got to do for part A. Now what about part B? How can we calculate the volume charge density? What equation do we need? The volume charge density is represented by the symbol rho. It's equal to the total charge divided by the total volume. And the volume of the sphere, we know it's a 4 thirds pi r cubed. So let's go ahead and use this formula to calculate the volume charge density. So Q is 50 microcoulombs, or 50 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. Let's divide that by 4 thirds pi times the radius of the insulating sphere, which is 2 meters, raised to the third power. So the answer that I got is 1.49 times 10 to the minus 6. And the units for the volume charge density, it's coulombs per cubic meter. So that's rho. So that's how you can calculate it. So now let's take a few minutes to get the electric field inside the conductor. But instead of in terms of Q, let's get it in terms of rho. So we came up with the formula, the electric field is equal to K times Q times R divided by R cubed. And we know that rho is equal to Q over V, which means Q is the charge density, the volume charge density, times the volume. And the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 times pi R cubed. So therefore, Let's go ahead and replace Q with this expression. So we're going to have K times P times 4 over 3 pi r cubed times r. And on the bottom, we have r cubed. So we can cancel r cubed. And so the electric field is equal to k times p times 4 thirds pi times r. But now let's replace k with 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. So if we do that, the electric field is now equal to p or rho times 4 thirds times pi times r. And k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. So we can cancel the force, n pi. And this 3, it's in the bottom, so we could just put it here. So therefore, the electric field is equal to the volume charge density times the distance between a center and the point of interest inside the sphere. So keep in mind, r, little r, is uh, less than big r. So you're calculating the electric field inside the sphere. And it's going to be divided by epsilon sub naught times 3. So this is the electric field inside the sphere if you're given the volume charge density. That's how you can find it. Now let's move on to the last part. What is the electric field 3 meters away from the center of the sphere? So this time we wish to calculate the electric field at a point outside of the sphere. 
So little r is bigger than big R in this case. So let's start with Gauss's law. Ea is equal to Q divided by epsilon sub naught. So the area of the new Gaussian surface, which is indicated by the purple sphere, is 4 pi r squared. Now, the total charge enclosed by that purple sphere is the same as the total charge enclosed by the insulating sphere. There's no charge in this region. So Q is just Q. We don't have to change it. So now let's divide both sides by 4 pi r squared. So the electric field is equal to Q divided by 4 pi r squared times epsilon sub naught. So let's rewrite the equation. So I'm going to rewrite it as 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times Q divided by r squared. So this is equal to K. So therefore, the electric field outside of the insulating sphere is the same as the electric field of a point charge. It's equal to KQ over r squared. So now let's use the formula to get the answer. So we know k is 9 times 10 to the 9. q is 50 times 10 to the minus 6. And r, we want to find the electric field 3 meters away from the center. So let's plug it in. It's going to be 9 times 10 to the 9 times 50 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 9. And so the electric field is 50,000 newtons per coulomb.